My name is Kaylin. Um, I go to Thomas Jefferson High School. <laughs> and I decided this poem is called SEX Spells the Education You Never Gave Me. Across the nation, we are attempting to doctor a plague with shows titled 16 and Pregnant and Teen Mom. You complain about television and internet exposing my young generation to what you deem inappropriate behavior, but overlook the fact that it's our only source of education beyond abstinence is the most effective birth control. But abstinence is not birth control, it is sex control. It answers no questions that teen may ask parents who can only respond with blank stares and accusations. Threats of punishment if their child's pregnancy is thrust upon them like abstinence is upon me. The lack of sex education is the reason why teens may refer to sex as capital I-T, it. It's the reason your daughters become mothers at 16 and the reason your son thinks he doesn't need to wear a condom. It's the reason why I didn't know what ovulation was until seventh grade when I got my first period and turned to Google for the answers health class wouldn't provide. It's the reason both men and women are embarrassed buying tampons and pads, looking over their shoulders as they pick the boxes off the shelves and crossing their fingers that the cashier won't be an attractive one. But at Walmart, the chances are thankfully slim. <laughs> Listen, I don't know who I need to consult in order for sex education to be widespread, but I'm looking towards the white Republicans who sit in office not knowing how to please their wives because even at 50 years old, they still don't understand the female anatomy. With sex education, maybe boys will stop assuming that urination and ovulation come from the same place. Perhaps they will understand what a period is and how long it lasts. Maybe with sex education, sex itself wouldn't be a word we have to whisper behind closed doors and drawn curtains. Maybe we wouldn't hush our children when they ask what SEX is, because SEX is not a stork dropping babies on your doorstep. It is not the birds and the bees. It is reproduction in the simplest of ways. And instead of shying away from telling curious adolescents, we should understand that teenagers are the questions, whereas adults are the answers. We should understand by now that the epidemic is not teen pregnancy, it is abstinence. It is sex education only being my mother telling me not to have it. It is school telling me that my questions are not in the curriculum, that it's not appropriate for me to ask about my body or why it is that boys will never understand it, never know about it no matter how many me hold me close and tell me they love me. Because who we label as boys are learning about the male genitalia in room 127, while who we label as girls sit across the hall, room 129, learning about their first period. It is being given a pamphlet in place of answers and pads in place of comfort. Maybe if we sat everyone, regardless of gender identity, in room 131 and answered the questions they don't feel comfortable asking before their curiosities are brushed off as, as unnecessary and vulgar, we'd start to see that questions about sex will stop being answered by teens committing the act themselves. Across the nation, teenagers have questions. They don't know how STDs can or cannot be transmitted. They don't know the difference between AIDS and HIV. And as I'm saying this, I still don't know because abstinence didn't tell me.